have our guru and Marie Sabbath with us today again, and we're going to be sharing some wonderful habits from her book. And I'll again have all the information for you in the description of this video, as well as running across the screen, what self-made millionaires do that most people don't. 52 ways to create your own success. So if you haven't checked out her book yet, I really recommend that you do because hearing us discuss it is a tool and an aid in reading the book. So you really need to read the book because there's loads of great information in here that we don't want you to miss out on. Now, while we're touching all the key points, again, you really need to dig in deep and read her book. It's excellent, excellent read. So don't forget, too, we have a giveaway every week. We're going to be doing a giveaway. So don't forget to leave your comments in the description below. And we will add your name to a random generator. And then Anne Marie will give you the type of book format that you want. So if you want an audio book or a PDF or a hard co a physical copy of the book, she will, of course, accommodate that need. So today, um, we're going to delve into um, a lot of important information in learning how to discover your roadmap to success, to create your own success. And these things, as Anne-Marie said all week, are things that you know, but you need to hear them detailed out and reiterated in your life so you can cohesively put them all together. So Anne-Marie, thank you so much for joining us today. We're super excited to hear your, your words of wisdom, and can you delve in and let us know, you talk about in Habit 8, about team building, and we all know how important it is. You can't do this on your own, am I right? I mean, you really can't be a successful person on your own, right? You're right, Carol Ann. In fact, approximately 75% of self-made millionaires are entrepreneurs. So whether your viewers are entrepreneurs work in companies and have a team or their entrepreneurs have built their own organizations team it's essential to know what it takes to build a good team one of the things that i learned as i was building my what is now 33 year old business is your team is only as good as the way you treat them and for that reason you are a professional family you are only as good as the person who is the front, the ear, the person on the other side of the email. And so for that reason, I want to share what Jason Phillips, who is one of the self-made millionaires who I interviewed, does. I love Jason. In fact, uh, he's in Texas, and I had the pleasure of meeting him. He's in Plano, Texas. Mm -hmm. If I may share, what happened was Jason and his wife have a home repair business. And believe it or not, they did not have enough money for groceries. They would go to their family's homes and they would get canned foods. Well, they believed in their, what they were doing. It started as a painting business, evolved into home repair. He now has 45 to 50 employees. And yes, what he does, of course, it didn't happen in a day. This happened over a few years. What he does is he develops his team into leaders, into managers. He knows that you need a team who will stay with you during thick and thin times. So what he does is he really works with them to develop them. That is the sign of a team. He motivates them. He manages them. He is their professional parent. And because he is alongside of them as he grooms them, they have total respect for him. So he's really this like the epitome of a success story by team building. He knew when he started this painting company, he couldn't do it alone. He needed to multiply himself and the way his team takes care of other people is the way he treats them. So the most important thing for that in order to build a good team is one, you have to set the tone by doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Two, set clear expectations. So much of miscommunication is not telling people what you expect by them seeing what you do. And once again, I said this, individuals who are representing organizations treat customers, treat clients, treat prospects only as well as their leader treats their team members. Mm -hmm. So 
again, as we know, the sum is always greater than the whole. Excellent. And you also talk about um, you have four ways to to build a great team and you go into some detail about that. I love those bullet points. Um, talk a little bit about how important communication is when it comes to team building. Yes, communication is essential. It's important to tune into what your how your team takes in information and speak with them, what I call in a neurolinguistic standpoint. So some people like to see it in writing, some people like one-to-one -one conversations, some team members prefer that uh, you are talking with them and explaining, giving them examples, showing them. Mm -hmm. So part of building a great team is to tune into how they take in information. Another thing that is so simple and so essential is catch people doing it right. Tell people what you do like rather than what you don't like. That's a big one. It sure is. And most of your viewers know about something called the sandwich effect. And I'm not talking about food. The mm -hmm. sandwich effect, when communicate with your team, is always begin with a positive, say what you have to say, maybe that constructive criticism, and then that last piece of bread is end with a positive. That helps you to develop your team so that they are not demoralized after you shared your constructive criticism. That's also, awesome. I love that. Thank you. And if I may share one more thing while we're on the topic. Of course, yes. Thank you. When building a team, compliment with you by using the word you. You did a great job, Joe. I'm so glad that we are working together. And provide constructive criticism with I. I want to share something that I observed that you may not realize. So what happens is people hear things constructively much better when you say I. Otherwise, if you say you, you are appearing to attack them. You for compliments, I for sharing constructive criticism, and make sure you feed them with that sandwich effect. That whole thing is genius right there. And it's so true because um, lots of times we hear people saying, you're doing this wrong, you need to do this this way. So flipping it around and saying, you know, I would like to know if you could work this way maybe or however you want to phrase things. So I love that whole concept. It's great. And of course, it's it's detailed very well in your book as well. Thank you. And if I may share one thing, because I know some of your viewers may not maybe a team member and may not um, have teams. And so I'm going to say something to team members. You need to reuse reverse psychology on your managers by using you when complimenting and by sharing I when you have an idea that you think can be done better. So reverse roles is very important. Why do you think in corporate America, um, you know, the, the leaders of, of companies tend to, to do that, to blame and, and kind of point fingers? It's very prevalent in corporate America, um, I still am reading about how a lot of folks are so, that's why it's so important to create your own success so you can get out of corporate America. <laughs> right? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> well, when somebody points fingers, and let's face it, we're human, we've all been known to do that, and we've learned from it, that's essential. When people point fingers, it's because they are insecure. Yeah. It's because they are blaming others for what may or may not be their fault. Whereas a good leader would say, you know, I see that XYZ project didn't go as well as uh, we all expected. What could I have done to help you to make it better? Instead of saying, rotten job, you are on probation and you may right. not have a job. And I read recently that more and more folks are starting their own businesses now more than ever. So your book is really timely in that sense where it can really help an entrepreneur, you know, become successful by following your habits and you know, listening to the way that other folks created their success. Now, you also talk about the art of delegation. I think that's another big, important one. Can you go over um, some of the keys? Like you talk about, uh, you have four tips for mastering the art of delegation. Could you share some of that with us? Oh, yes. And I tell you, I learned this the hard way. I was not born learning how to delegate. <laughs> Here's the rule. Anything you have done successfully three times, you create into a system. That's number one. Mm -hmm. That system should be documented. When you have a team, you then delegate that to a team member. 
That is called empowering. Mary, I'd like you to grow with it, our organization. I have been doing A, I have seen what works and doesn't work, and so I would like you now to do it, and I'm going to give you the format that I have found works. That's how you do. That's exactly how you do it. Mo many, many new business owners, new managers are micromanagers. And I'm going to tell you, if I may, how I learned to delegate. I was hired by American Express Bank quite a long time ago, about 10 years ago, to go around the world. We weren't, we weren't into cell phones like we are now. I could uh, call, or, but I could not exactly be emailing or texting. And so what happened was I left my assistant run my business. I allowed her to run my business because I couldn't do it when I was gallivanting all over the world. I called her when I got back, took one day off, and I said, how's business, Susie? She said, I closed three pieces of business. I said, what are you talking about? I, I had no idea. I never thought she could close business. She said, you left me alone. Susie now takes business. She knows how to court based on her style, probably much better than I could do with certain types of prospects. And so sometimes when you are, when you step away, you need to make sure that you let your team own things. Sometimes you're going to be delegating by default because you're not available. So again, anybody who is not available should have someone to whom they can delegate. I don't care if it's an automatic reply system, if it is a formatted letter, you have to delegate. Mm. And by doing that, a, an entrepreneur to grow a business, to create their own success, we need to focus a minimum of 70% of their time working on business while their team members work in business. If a manager, if a business owner is working less than 70% of his or her time working on business, then guess what? They're doing something wrong. So delegate in business. And some people say, but I don't even have enough money to have a team. Well, guess what? Read my lips. You really do. Because you need to create a format letter. You need to make sure that the high rent time of the day between nine and four, based on your time zone, is working on business. And before the day starts, once you have that business, you can get that proposal out. You can invoice people. You can do your paperwork. You should be working in business before and after business hours. I didn't say you had a life. <laughs> However, the key is right. you do whatever it takes to get a job, the job done, which we'll talk about during upcoming. Interview. Absolutely. That's a great tip for control freaks because I know a lot of folks that own businesses and they're so afraid to let go of some of that control. They're petrified to delegate but they're hurting themselves by not doing that. Am I right? Of course. And people make mistakes. I mean, people make mistakes. I'll tell you, my assistant sends out everything. I tell her what's going on. She sends it out. And you know what? If there's a mistake, she owns it. So she, we revise it. I say, you know, I sure. think something could have been better. She revises it and it's over with. Learn from things. How can we learn together? Because she is me and I am her. That's you're right. you're all in one as a team member. You have to delegate in order to grow your business. Listen, if you fell off the end of the earth and you weren't going to be able to be back in your business for a month, you darn well better have groomed team members to be able to run your business. So that's the art of delegation. That is how you create a wonderful team member and they will respect you because you have enough confidence in them to make it happen. That's such sage advice. And that segues beautifully into your next habit, which is taking calculated risks. Isn't that the truth? If you are not willing to take a calculator risk, then don't waste your time starting a business. Mm. As Dr. Eden Ryo says, you have to risk failure in order to experience success. It's essential. Now, the key is you have to know you can swim. That means you at least have to know what's going on. And when I tell, tell you this, you don't have to know everything about something. You simply have to know something about what you're doing and you learn as you go. Uh, this was one of the other. There are many people who are self-made millionaires and all of these individuals have 
taken a calculated risk. Carol Ann, let me ask you, what calculated risk did you take that was a concern for you and it did work out after a while? Oh my gosh, recently or, well, I would have to say when I first started my business, it was a huge calculated risk. So, um, you know, you, you can mull things over and mull things over and eventually you have to decide to either jump in or not jump in. So sometimes the risk is big and sometimes it's not as big because I think we all take calculated risks on a daily basis too, right? Especially as business owners, don't we, Anne Marie? Well, this is the case. Here's what is interesting. People take, you can tell how people, how well people take calculated risks if you know them. Do they order a different uh, item from the menu? Do they eat something okay. different? That is something that you can tell about yourself. So taking a calculated risk starts with moving your cheese. When you go out, so you true. walk a different way. Do you order something that you've never had? That's yes. called a calculated risk. I don't mean that you have to eat dog, uh, you have to eat snails if you don't like it. However, taste something differently. And that by itself will help you in the work that you're doing to take a risk. Now, I have to tell you, some of us like reacting. I don't mind taking risks. However, I have to know what the worst thing is that can happen. And ah. what that worst thing is, how will I manage that worst thing? And guess what? It's all right. So you set yourself up for success. I'll give you an example. Sure. Taking the calculated risk. I love taking risks. However, I always position myself to fly out on the very first flight of the day. Mm -hmm. Because my risk is not going to be, I'm not going to make a particular meeting. And so I'll take the first flight of the day if I know that the meeting is mid-afternoon. Or I'll fly out the day before and work in a hotel or create a new piece of business, whatever the case. So the key is take calculated risks by knowing what the worst thing would be. The worst thing would be is you'd get on another flight. The worst thing would be uh, you test something and it either works, and if it doesn't work the way you expected it, mm -hmm. then you're going to learn from it and it's going to open other doors. So bottom line, one, stretch yourself by taking small risks. They will eventually, eventually turn into large risks. And if I may share it to you with you, you know that my mantra with my this ninth book is every single day I pass out 10 business cards. Yes. Now, if you don't think I'm taking a calculated risk by handing somebody my business card when I'm at the grocery store, when I'm at the airport, when I'm doing whatever I'm doing, that's a risk because I could fear rejection. However, I always focus on them and say, look, I do business with you and I'm going to ask you to do business with me by looking at my ninth book, what self-made millionaires do that most people don't. That's a risk. You don't think I have the butterflies out of formation in my stomach. You're wrong. However, I take calculated risks. And again, I'm not bragging because I do work very hard like I hope your mm -hmm. viewers are. That's why this book, What Self and Millionaires Do, became number one on Kindle and personal finance on Amazon on April 18th. Because you have to experience risk. You have to risk failure to experience success. So again, you don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the best. I certainly am not. However, you take a risk in order to experience success. Gosh, that's so true. You know, um, the other day I was in Home Depot and I thought of you instantly because a fella walked up to me and you can tell he was scoping people out. And then I'm watching him and he's scoping people out and he walked up to me and he handed me his business card. Aww. And he said, excuse me, you know, I'm in the tree cutting business and... Aww. You know, and he said, if you don't need trees cut, like he was real, you could tell this man was going to be successful. He strategically Good. took risk, he thought about what he wanted to say, and I immediately thought of you and thought of your book. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just the perfect example of risk taking. It really is. Because a lot of people are trepidatious about approaching strangers, handing out business cards. But like you said, start with a little piece of cheese, change what you eat. And then those little risks will blossom into larger risks. Love it. Absolutely. And you know, the key is people need to see as you take calculated risks, uh, will you take that card and will you mention it to other people about the tree cutting? That's what he said to me. But uh -huh. yeah, he asked me to do that. And I said, of Good. course. And do you know, I put that card in my bag and I intend on doing that. <laughs> of course, because you know what? He will be a winner. He took a yes. risk. But this is not rocket science. 
what this is is you have to be proactive, not reactive. Right. And you know, it would be nice for you to send them a note, just an email to say, I have to tell you, I was really impressed by you giving me your card. And when there is someone who does need a tree cutting service, I can guarantee you I will make That's a wonderful thing to do. Thank you. That's a great way to pay it forward. I love that. That's great. It's my pleasure. We <laughs> have to help each other. Absolutely. Next and lastly for today's uh, series, you talk about turning failures into opportunity. This is so big, Anne-Marie, oh. because a lot of people get sketched out the minute they fail and they give up and walk away. Isn't that the truth? Well, number one, we don't want the word bankruptcy in anybody's vocabulary. However, it's not a matter of dying. Many, many, many self-made millionaires had to fail before they succeeded. So that's number one. So whether it's something small or whether it is something large, we want you to take calculated, that big risks. Analyze what you could have done differently. How could I have made it happen? You know, if you want to sulk, Give yourself a half a day to sulk and then get over it and move on. Also, figure out how you can modify your approach. Mm -hmm. That's what you do in order to, to turn failure into an opportunity. And then something that people need to do in order to avoid risks, excuse me, in order to avoid failing is surround yourself with people you want to be like. Ask them questions. What could I have done differently or what can I do differently in order to minimize my failure, to, in order to create my own success? I can guarantee you, you know, every day, all day long, I know I have confidence to do things. However, it's something in which I'm setting precedent. I ask people who have already done it. And I don't always agree. However, I do take their suggestions because if I were so smart, I wouldn't be asking them. So here's the deal. Take the Scarlett O'Hara approach. When you do something that doesn't work out the way you do it, you know that success, failure is only one step closer to success. You brush yourself up, stand up, brush yourself off, and do it again and figure out how you're going to do it differently. You want to surround yourself with people who have done it because they're simply going to lift you up versus surround yourself with negative people to say, I told you not to start a business. I told you X percentage of people fail. Forget that. Stick around with entrepreneurs. And, you know, I have invited people. In fact, I heard from somebody last night from L.A. who emailed me and he said, I bought your book. I am a life coach for individuals who want to improve their health. And he told me what he did to succeed. And you know what? I'm now coaching him. And I told him the That's tuition wonderful. is very high. You need to pay it forward. This is the key. This is what you have to do to be able to minimize failure. This is why I wrote this book, to help people to create their own success. So the word failure shouldn't exist. The word or the term one step closer to success is how people should interpret that F word. So you also talk about um, what folks need to do when they encounter a roadblock in their life. And that's a part of failure as well. So what, what words of wisdom do you have about what folks should do uh, when they encounter a roadblock? Well, this is very easy. How do you encounter a roadblock? Let me ask you this. How do you move an elephant? <laughs> How do you move an elephant? You walk around it. Right. If right. something doesn't work one way, guess what? Quit knocking your head against concrete. Instead, go another angle. If you can't get in the back door with a client, go or front door, go in the back door. And I'm going to give you an example. My son is in sales. He could sell a bag of dead flies. He wanted to reach out to a designer because he knew that her clients could definitely handle the product that he had. Every, and he's very low key. So he called her every single Monday at 10 a.m., after 15 times, he still did not receive a voicemail back. The 16th time, he called her and he said, Sue, good morning. This is Scott Work. By now, I'm sure you've received the last 15 emails I've sent you for the past 15 Monday mornings. Since you haven't told me you're not interested in my product, I'm going to call you every Monday morning at 10 a.m. until you tell me differently. Oh, that's a scare. Now, if that's not called, keep going, persevere. He, she finally called him the 17th morning before 10, and he, she said, Scott, you've called me 16 times. Do you really believe you have something that my clients can use? He said, why would I have wasted my time? And guess what? 
they met and he's she's now using his product that's wonderful that's a real good story about perseverance right there that's great the key is why did he do it you know what he wanted her business he didn't need her business he knew that this is how it works so the key is you know what he could have done it another way however he continued to do it based on his comfort level not her comfort level he did it based on what was going to work this is one of the things that i want your listeners your viewers to know it's better to reach out to fewer people more times than more people fewer times and i have to share this i worked with a client and he had an account executive salesperson this account executive would show up with 50 business cards every week and say, look at the prospects. And the manager said, look what? How many times have you followed up with them? You sent them a thank you via email. When did you follow up with them? What did you do? So this is why pe people need to realize, entrepreneurs, our listeners need to know, in order to create your own success, you need to reach out to more fewer people more times. And you need to realize that people need to see things seven to 12 times before they are even going to consider your service, your product, my book. Because people are busy, and the key is it has to strike the time. Now, I don't mean you call them seven times or 12 times every day or all week long, but you do it like my son did it, over a period of time. I might email people, and if I know an email doesn't work, then maybe the next week I may send them a handwritten note. The key is you have to persevere and you have to know that you believe in 110%. Yes. Listen, we know from the last, if I may share, we know from last week's uh, video cast about people who take sometimes four years to make, to choose to work with you. It's very, very important for people to know in order to be successful, you need to do whatever it takes to get the job done. You have persevere to be relentless. Or don't, you have to be relentless. Make it part of your middle name. And you know what? Read things that allow you to maintain the confidence. As I said before, surround yourself with people you want to be like. They will build you up. They will not tear you down. You, they email me. I'll take care of them. Yes. You know, Anne-Marie, every week I'm so flabbergasted because you're giving away these amazing nuggets of wisdom to people and you're doing it because you truly want people to succeed. I hope that people really play these videos and listen to these words because these are truly the gems that you need to create success in your life. I mean, you interviewed how many people? Let's reiterate. Well, I started with 200 people and 30 people actually followed through and it was a perfect number for the book. So this is why you always start high to get what you want. And these people are real people. They follow through, they blend in, they don't stand out right. because they have created their own success. They have nothing to prove. And the only thing I have to prove is how to help people be successful. I'm at the stage in my life, don't get me wrong. I love selling books. I love generating revenue. But what I like more than anything is helping people create their own success. And the people who know it, who see it, who believe it, they invested a copy of this book. And let me tell you, it has made a difference for them. I asked them to email me, buy the book, email me. What, which of the 52 secrets have you already mastered? And which ones haven't you mastered? And I will coach you along the way. And let me tell you, there's a high, very high tuition. You have to pay it forward. You have to do it for somebody else. Nobody does that. Well, I love doing that because you know what? I get anything I want in my life because I know how to work. Sometimes it takes 10 years, so what? Sometimes it is the next day because the law of attraction, the universe gives you whatever yes. you want when you're good to other people. Absolutely. And let me tell you, the only thing I want is to help people succeed. You exude that, Anne-Marie. Thank and you. If, you do, and if folks don't know what the law of attraction is, I highly recommend that they Google it and do some research because it ties in to every nuance of your book. Absolutely, absolutely. This is what it's about. And this is why, as I said in our very first video cast, I wrote this book to help people create their own success. I've worked with more than 200,000 individuals during the past 30 years to assist them in helping their, their companies increase their bottom lines. I love doing that, however, I want to help individuals 
create their own success. And you know what? Uh, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink. So you know what? Get going is all I can say. Oh, it's you're making right here waiting for you. You're making the world a, a better place. I mean, it's just thank you about it. So, in closing, any other tidbits from those habits that we discussed, or I think you pretty much covered all the juicy stuff. Well, but know that there's always a solution to a problem, and step back, think about it. You know, take the 24, 48 hour rule. Realize that you're not the only person who's encountered this elephant. As I said, walk around it. Don't worry about that. And don't tell people, ponder a while. It's very important to think and then reach out to people. You know, I can't sleep if I have a moment where I don't know how to handle something. Mm. And so I always, always reach out to my brain trust advisors. Sure. And I don't care how successful you are. You always want people who uh, are where you want to be. I love where I am. However, I also like to reach out to people to say, how would you have done this differently? And let me tell you, I have learned. I've stepped back. I've gone back five steps so that I could go forward one step. So the key is persevere, do what it takes to get the job done. And we forgot to say something, have fun in the process. It's yeah. the journey. That's so important. So important. Thank you so much, Anne Marie. And if I can just remind folks to subscribe because every Monday before noon, we have a new episode uploaded to our YouTube channel. So don't forget, please subscribe and spread the word. That's all we ask is that you pay it forward. Right, Anne-Marie? So yes. if you could kindly do that, we would be ever so appreciative of it. And don't forget, leave a comment below so you can win one of Anne-Marie's amazing books too. So we'll see you next Monday before noon. And if you have any questions, I will run Anne Marie's email address across the screen as well as mine. Please don't hesitate to reach out to her. And I'll also put her um, website up there as well. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much, Anne Marie. My pleasure. We'll see you next Monday.